an Indian crested porcupine. She left some of her grapes here. I'll place them over here. So she is from Southeast Asia. She's one of the largest porcupine species in the world. And you guys can see that she's covered in quills. Now these quills work a little bit differently than a lot of people believe. People believe that they shoot them out, but they don't actually have the ability to do that. Though they can fall out the same way that our hair and our finger, well our hair falls out, so your fingernails are not falling off. But anyway, they're made out of the same material as our hair and our fingernails. And that is keratin. So the same protein, probably recognize him. He is an African gray parrot. So obviously he comes from Africa and he gets his name because of that and because he's gray. A lot of the bird species out there are named for their region or their coloration or both. And um, especially parrots. He is a parrot. Parrots are found all over the world. Um, he specifically though obviously is from Africa like I said. Now parrots all have this curving beak. It's called a hook bill. That's going to allow them to break open their food. They eat hard shelled nuts and seeds and then fruits with really thick outer peels. Um, so that beak is very important to them. They also use their beak however to climb. Parrots don't just fly from place to place. They also do a lot of climbing because they live in the trees in the dense jungle. So flying can be tricky unless they want to move up above those trees. But from branch to branch, they'll actually use their beak and their feet to climb. And their feet are special. Their toes are um, zygodactyl, meaning they've got two in the front, two in the back. So they hook kind of like our thumb and our forefinger do. And so he's got a really good grip with those feet. And he can climb through that forest with feet over foot super easily. Now, when we bring out our parrots, I'm having a little trouble with my microphone staying on. When we bring out our parrots, the biggest question that we get asked is, can they talk? Well, I'm gonna demonstrate that for you today. Parrots don't talk, but they are mimickers, so they can copy sounds and sometimes even words that they hear. And actually, the African gray parrot is one of the best mimickers out there. Um, so we'll start with something easy. I have been saying that his name is Zuri. Now when he says his name, he gives his first and last name. Let's see if you guys can pick up that last name of his. What's your name? So he says Zuri Bird. He's very polite <laughs> and proper. Now, um, why don't you say something else easy? Why don't you tell everybody hi, Zuri? Okay, yeah, we are a little bit of a wise guy, aren't we? We're just copying right off the bat. You know, they can actually copy our individual voices. And that one was trained by me, so it comes out right in my voice. Hi, Zuri. Hi, Zuri. Just like I say it. But everyone else can elicit the same response by using that cue. They're very intelligent birds. Now, speaking of intelligence, we tried to teach Zuri animal sounds. We thought living here at the zoo, he would hear a whole bunch, and he would say nothing but animal sounds. But the only thing we ever got from him was, are you a fox? <laughs> Told you he was a wise guy, right? Um, Sorry, Mary, I'm having a lot of trouble with this mic hanging on my ear. So let's get it situated and we can talk about this show. Is the show fun? Is it fun? Yes, it's a lot of fun. And uh, one of the things that Zuri finds to be really fun are uh, telling stories. One time he told me a story about how he went to outer space. Yes, he did. And while he was there, he saw a spaceship and it had a laser. Yes, it did. And let's see, how did you get back to Earth, Zuri? Did you fall? <coughs> All the way back down. You know, parrots can fly. I told you he was a little 